Hello everybody and welcome back to The Forge. Today we will be talking about and making something called Mokume Gane. So what is Mokume Gane, you ask? Basically, if you've heard of Damascus, it's the same concept. It's pattern welded metal, except instead of steel, which is what Damascus is made of, we'll be using copper and nickel. And you can use brass as well and you can get sheets cut, thin sheets, like thin copper sheets, uh, thin brass sheets, and you can stack them and weld them together. And it will give you the same effect, but that is much more expensive and a bit out of my pay range. So instead, what we are gonna do is we're gonna use quarters. So first things first, you have to clean your quarters really well so you can get some mineral spirits or some uh, paint thin or anything like that and you just wipe them clean wear some uh, rubber gloves or something because you don't want any of your oils on there because we're going to be welding these in the forge and they need to be clean in between if it's going to stick so just make sure you get all those cleans and stack them up and then we're going to weld them together okay so with Makuma Gane and any Damascus if we're going to do it, we also have to talk about pattern. So what pattern do you want? This is a very simple raindrop pattern. This was my first attempt, so I'll, I didn't know if it was going to work. So I just, I did three raindrops, if you can see those. But to get that effect, what you do is you take your billet, once you get it forge welded together initially, and you drill partially through just a third of the way or so. And you can do that all over. I didn't know if it was gonna work, so I just did it three times. And then you'll take it back to the forge and you'll hammer it flat. And we will do it, we'll do a range drop one just so everyone can see exactly how I do that. But there are plenty of other patterns. There's no shortage of them out there. There's, I know there's twist, there's a mosaic ladder all those types of patterns and a quick google search of damascus patterns and you'll be able to see what i'm talking about anyway i have got my quarter stacks cleaned so our next step is to weld them and just so we're clear if you don't if funds are an issue or anything you don't need to go to the bank and get a roll of quarters i don't i just have a jar change that i let collect and then every now and then if i want to do this i'll go and i'll get the quarters out and that's what i use and if it's your first try at this you don't have to have i'll have to clean that one again you don't have to have some giant stack of quarters i'm not even going to use this a stack this big i'm gonna cut it up into about three parts you only need a stack four, five, six quarters thick, and that'll give you a decent billet of Makume Gane. Now later on, if you're gonna do things um, with it, uh, other than just little, little coins and pendants and things, some people like to use it as guards on knives just to add a little accent or just something pretty on it. I don't know. Um, it looks really nice when they do it, but uh, for that you'd need a much bigger billet so that might be when you get into the stack high billet of quarters but for right now we only need a stack of quarters five six deep okay so now that we got them cleaned now we weld them i want to try and keep the stack as straight as you can the way i do it is i just put it in a post vise or not post vise but a bench vise like this and you can just clamp this wherever you can get it to hold and then we just want to tack it just something to grab them with because they will be hot and then you can just flip it over and tack weld a different side. Oh my God. Oh, 
Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to show all my bloopers or not, because uh, there was a minor accident, and I got a little bit flustered there for a minute. Anyway, uh, what happened was, well, part of what happened was, I blew apart the billet I made. However, it does demonstrate kind of what we're doing. There's where the weld stuck and then tore part, part of the quarter, but if you look... The core of the quarter is copper, and then it's just coated in this silver nickel substance. And that's what creates the pattern when we forge weld it and spread it out. The silver's the coating, orange is the core. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. You can. And what we end up with is two disgusting looking quarter billets but that's what this used to look like so we'll go with it all right so let's head to the forge okay so now what we got to do is take your billet and we're going to put it in the forge and we're going to bring it up to a welding temperature now for I keep saying that and I don't really explain because we welded, but we haven't forge welded. Um, welding has been around much longer than any type of electric welder. And originally it was a blacksmith. He would bring the metal up to the welding temperature, which is higher than the forging temperature. And he would join two pieces of metal. Now for the nickel and the copper in this, it's actually got a much lower welding temperature than uh, uh, steel and when we put it in here we're going to bring it up and its welding temperature is really just a kind of a bright orange not, not even a bright orange but one way you're going to tell is when you for, when we forge and you'll see that in other videos where they brush off the scale that builds up like that right there um, nickel and copper don't make forge scale when they are heated so a good indicator of that you've had this up to welding heat is it starts to look like it's forming some scale and what that is is it's starting to bubble because it's actually starting to get molten forging uh forge welding temperature is actually just a just a, a bit lower than melting because you don't want it to melt and everything fry and fizzle away you just want it hot enough to where when you hit it everything sticks together so that's what we're going to do we get this whole process is much easier and if you had a gas forge as in a coal forge the billet is actually about the same size as a piece of coal so if you lose it in the fire you, you you'll lose it you'll have to go digging for it and everything else and you want it you want to get it in deep enough to where it'll get up to the right heat and you can still see it because being able to see what it's doing is the best way to tell when it's ready. You can't really time it. And another thing you can do is you can have some flux nearby. Now they sell flux, blacksmith's flux, uh, actually marketed as blacksmith's flux from different suppliers and things. Or you can use borax, like the detergent. I picked this up at a five and below, and you're supposed to keep it clean, and I haven't, but so far that hasn't been much of a problem for me. And I don't know if you really have to use it on Makumagane, but I have been, and it's worked out for me, so that's what I'm gonna do again. And another thing, if you don't have a really good weld, and it's kind of hard to get a really good weld on quarters, um, they'll start to break apart and then you will really lose them in the fire. So I'm just going to add some flux on there and then bring it back up to heat. And when we go to set the weld, it's not like how you think it'd be where you have to wail on it. You just have to, it really you're just giving it a nice sharp tap to try and get all the pieces to stick. Just set it, and we're gonna whack, 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 and 
then you can start forging it. Okay. So that might have actually set like we wanted. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take it up to forging key again, and we're gonna give it some more wax. So I did have a camera on, but what I did was I brought it up to uh, forge welding heat again and gave it another couple taps. And I'm sorry you missed it, but there was just this little explosion of red hot, almost looked like a goo. And what that was was the flux being forced out of the gaps in between the coins. And that's actually a good sign when you're forge welding. But to see if your uh, weld stuck, because the outer rims of quarters are ridged anyway, so you'll see the layers, but what you can do is you can take a file and you can file into it. And if eventually you stop seeing the gaps in between, that means the center is good and you can continue. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So good news, um, off camera, just cause it's kind of tedious, but what I did was took a round file and I filed into it a little ways until I found that it's a, you can see the layers, the orange and the silver, <coughs> um, but you can see that it's all one piece, there's no cracks. Over here you can see what I'm talking about being a crack, but that was actually a lot worse and as I ground it's gotten less and less so it's not, it'll grind out so I'm not worried about that. But uh, anyway, so what you do is when you once you see it's one piece you can then either file it or grind it, doesn't matter. And you just grind all the way around and make it smooth and neat for the next step. Okay, the next step for a raindrop pattern Makumegane is, oh, let me turn on the light. You have to drill holes. And everywhere you drill will be a circle or the raindrop. So if you want a bunch, space them out. If you want a few, just however you want to do it. It's important when you're drilling to remember only go about a third of the way through because it's too deep and you won't have enough material to flatten it out. Not deep enough and when you're polishing and sanding all the uh, pattern will disappear. So. Okay, so after drilling the holes, however you want them to, um, and you'll, when you look in here, you'll be able to see all the different layers of nickel and copper. So uh, that's really what we're going for. Um, so next step is to, after you've got the holes drilled, take it, heat it up to a forging heat again, and then we're just going to flatten it out. So what we're going for now is that we want all these holes we drilled to end up even with the other surface. So you're just going to heat and hammer until that happens. So this side is already pretty much even, so I don't have to worry about it as much. So what I'll do is I'll stick these holes down on the anvil and hammer that way so that they have a smooth surface to impact on. See, I almost have those holes even with the surface, so one more heat should do it. Okay, so once you have it like you want it, then it's time to cool it off and take it to a sander and see what you got. Okay, so I got cocky today. We have our finished Makume Gane, and while the pattern is there, if you'll look, you can see those raindrops. I got, well, my caution the first time I made this is actually what saved me, because you can clearly see the raindrops, and I still have plenty of mass, and this is basically a coin. 
Now there is actually more quarters in the one we made today than the one I made the first time. But I got a little overzealous with my hole drilling and instead of going a third of the way through or less, I ended up going probably halfway, maybe a little bit more through. And by the time I had hammered it flat, we didn't have the mass to sand away all the imperfections and everything else, make it smooth. So everything we've done today, today, everything we've done today has been correct in how I tell you you should make Makume Gane. And if you do it the way I did it the first time, where you only drill a third of the way through, maybe less, you'll end up with this pattern and you'll end up with a nice sized coin, billet, whatever you're doing. But if you go too far through, it'll work still. It's just you won't have enough mass to clean it up and make it pretty. So thanks everybody for watching this instructional video on Makume Gane. Um, I hope your project comes up a little bit better than mine. I hope you get more of that and less of that. But thanks for watching. Um, get out of there, try it out, be safe. Don't forget to wear your safety glasses. And thanks for watching.